Uh, for the last, I guess, few months, of course, you all know that we have the broadcast on Thursday that we do, uh, God's Blueprint for Family, where we discuss family. Most of the time, that's the way it is, because sometimes, you know, God has something else to, to say and things like that. But, of course, we know that God is not caught up in days, you see. He's not caught up in, in days or anything like that. Uh, we're called to worship God in spirit and in truth, and that's every day, you see. So we don't have to just wait until Sundays and midweek uh, to hear from the Lord or anything like that. But here lately, the Lord has been landing on my heart to stop the Thursday night service for the purpose of ministering personally. And so, of course, it just won't be Thursday night. But... Uh, from here on out, as far as I know, or, or until the Lord says different, we're not going to meet up on Thursday nights. Uh, the Lord want uh, us to minister to people individually as well. And so we want to take more time because my wife and I, and I'm, sh and I'm sure a couple other people here, minister to people over the phone or in person. And, and that is what the Lord wants. Uh, uh, part of the focus of this ministry to be about. Now, uh, I use this as an example. You've heard me say a couple of times, if you've been here for a length of time, uh, there have been a couple of times that I wanted to dismiss, or a few times that I wanted to dismiss, but I felt like somebody had something in their heart, and so the law wouldn't allow me to dismiss. And part of the reason is because sometimes people have a hard time asking for prayer. Sometimes people need to be ministered to, but they're not comfortable being ministered to in front of a crowd of people. That's the reason why some folks may not come, you know, like when a preacher give, extend the invitation to Christ, some people may not come. The enemy may talk them out of it or whatever, but does that mean God doesn't want them? And so, my wife and I, we've noticed that the ministry is more effective, especially when we talk to individuals one-on-one, -on -one, because now we can dig deep into what's going on. People might not feel comfortable. Everybody just don't have that in them. Well, I can just put all my business out there. I don't care who here, you know. Everybody's not that way. But that doesn't mean that God is saying, well, you know, if you can't t tell in, in, in front of everybody, then I ain't going to do nothing for you. If you notice, most of the Lord, the Lord only went to the synagogue once a week on the Sabbath day. Everywhere else, it was mostly one-on-one -on -one ministering. He met the woman at the well. And he didn't wait for a whole crowd of people to get there so he could show off. He ministered to her one on one and she went out and told what he did. And she's the one that gathered that big crowd afterwards. You see that? And so that's the way the Lord, the Lord wants us to focus on that. The Lord don't want this to be the same kind of ministry that most other ministries are like where you come to church and you better hope that you hear from them then because I'm so busy I can't as a, as a pastor, I'm so busy, I can't talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. You see? And so, it's only so much you'll get with, with me standing up here talking. You may hear from the Lord every Sunday about your personal situation. But you know what? The Lord want to go deeper than that. And that, and I'm not just, it's not just my wife and I'm talking about talking to every minister that's a part of this ministry. God wants you to reach out and touch people one-on-one -on -one because that's what people need. When the Lord was healing people, he didn't just wave his hand and say, everybody in the crowd be healed. <laughs> I hope you caught it. <laughs> They had some different kind of devils there. And <laughs> you had to call them by name. 
And the Lord don't want us just generally ministering. Hey, come hear my pastor preach. He'll have a word for you. And it may be true. But you know what? God don't want you coming to church defeated and then going home defeated. Amen. Well, thank the Lord I got the word, but I don't know how to apply it. I, you know, the pastor don't know anything about my personal life. When I was in the hospital back in 1997, I was in a room for the first, I guess, couple of days or maybe the first week with a man who was a diabetic. And um, every day I would watch those nurses come in there and he had a, he had a, a hole, a deep hole in between his toes and his foot. And they would, you know, I don't know what he had did to his foot. But you know, of course, diabetics, they don't heal fast. That's one of the signs of being a diabetic because they, their body isn't quick to heal, you see, because of the blood flow and things like that. And so it was a, a very deep hole there. And every day those nurses would come in and they would get all the old gauze out of there and they would he, take them to the sauna, you know, where, where he would put his foot in there and it would boil out all of that infection and then they would put new gauze in there. Now, why am I saying this? Because the devil has been working on people. And he's dug a, some very deep wounds in people that's not going to be helped by them showing up incognito every Sunday to church. Amen. The Lord wants to dig deep and get to the root and the core of what's going on. And a lot of times... That's not going to be accomplished in a church setting. So the Lord don't want to, in other words, the Lord don't want us to confine his power to the sanctuary. Amen. The Lord wants us to get out. He wants us to meet people where they are. He wants us to call people. He wants us to go visit with people. You see, he wants us to bring the gospel. He told what we just read here in the 16th chapter of Mark. He says, go ye into all the world. He didn't say bring the world to here. He told them to go. I'm telling you, the world don't want to go to church. So you have to bring God to them. You're not going to do it by trying to invite them to your church. Sometimes that works. Most of the time it don't. Because most of the time if somebody want to go to church, they don't have to be invited. That means that you, you're going to have to bring some extra incentive. You're going to have to show what God is doing through you. That you can minister to them right where they are. You see that? And I want us to have, I want this to be a part of our prayer life. Lord, open up doors and show and, and bring divine connections for me to minister to people. And I'm telling you, he'll do it. It will have all kind of people he's sending your way to be ministered to. But you know what? You have to look for that. You have to look for that. When I was in the Navy, I was, um, when I was in the Navy, that was my prayer. When I first told the Lord, okay, Lord, I, you know, I know that you called me to preach, and so, you know, if you could just send people my way, I'll minister to them. And one by one, he just began to send people to me, and they would just start talking about stuff that you would not believe. It was like they, they needed help. And they needed godly counsel, and they may not have understood. And I can't tell you the number of times I've heard people say, I don't know why I feel comfortable telling you what it is that I'm telling you, or why I felt led to share this with you. Well, I know why. Because wounds don't get healed when they're covered up. You see that? One of the worst things you can do for a sore is to put a Band-Aid on it. <laughs> that sore needs some oxygen 
<laughs> you see that? And the Lord Jesus Christ himself, he's, the, he's our oxygen. He's the, the breath of life. And so the Lord wants us to minister to people, not only just here locally as part of the congregation, but also individually. He wants us to... He wants us to get in there in the trenches with people. You see that? And so, that, and so that's going to be the way it's going to be. We want to get in the trenches. And we're looking forward to testimonies. When, when the apostles, when they, after the Lord went back to heaven, and they would meet on the first day of the week, they, mostly what they shared were testimonies of what God was doing. They didn't wait until Sunday or until the first day of the week, you see, uh, for all of that to come out, you know, because they understood God didn't only move on Sundays. You see that? And so the Lord want us to be a part. The Lord want us to be and to walk in what we, what we have learned in him, the things that we've seen him do constantly in our lives and things like that. He want us to walk in it. And he want us to spread it out that way. Many of you can think about and can think of people who you know need to be ministered to, who you, who you may be friends with, or whom God may have placed in your circle. God wants you to take more time to minister to them. And so you're going to have to ask God for his heart to show you people. And listen, and there's some folks around you that need to be ministered to who you may not have any idea anything's going on. Because folks, some folks know how to put on a smile. And some folks know how to pretend that everything is okay when it's not okay. You see? And so th that's the area that God wants us to move into, ministering to people where they are. Where they are. You see that? Where they are. Amen.